how to prune an oak tree. What's up, guys? This is Mark Russell, 770 Arborist, providing tree service for the North Atlanta area. And quickly today, we are going to virtually prune an oak tree for a client of mine. He had some questions, and it's a kind of a smaller tree, a smidge outside my uh, area. So I said, hey, look, send some pictures, and we're gonna make some virtual cuts. And then I'll make some content for you uh, to look at how you would prune a pin oak. So here we go, uh, going back over to the image itself. This is the tree in question. So let's look at this tree just a little bit, obviously. And, and so you can see down here, this is image capture date, June 2017. So at this point, we're about a year and a half further on um, this. And you can see real quick, I'll just show you, this is the current um, image of this tree. He just sent me this earlier. We're going to look at this from a couple different angles here. Okay, so this is um, obviously the June is in when it's in foliation, and this is uh, just today, which is uh, in December. So the issue, let's just go over here real quick and um, look at, oh my gosh. Hey, Russell, get your... Uh, Get your mug over to the left side here. There we go. Okay, so let's look at the issue. Right now, number one, first thing that I would be wanting to do is I would want to do a little bit of canopy lift. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to get in there and we're going to... Do you go as high as here? I don't think so. Um, let's see. I... I might leave, yeah, see, here's the thing. Over time, you probably would want to go that high. Um, over time, you would probably want, and see, here's the, here's the issue. If you go this high, like, ah, if you go this high on your cuts at first, it's gonna look a little weird because that's probably six and a half, seven feet, maybe eight feet high. But over time, check this out. Oh, oh, you can't see. Let me, um, let me, uh, turn this off so you can see. The thing is, over time, look at this. If you notice, obviously, like if you took out all of that area, it's going to match over here because if you leave this area on, like if you if we come down over here, look at how high up this poplar is, okay? And like that maple, way higher. So in reality, here's the deal. If you prune it a little bit higher right now, it's going to look a little lollipopish. Maybe, you know, it just really depends. I mean, after all, he did, he was complaining that these little drop downs were kind of affecting him. So maybe, maybe I would go in right here and clip those off. So let's, let's look a little bit at that real quick. We'll turn this off. Um, and then let's bring in the images and just kind of see where we would be making those cuts. Um, this is side image. This is from, mm -mm -mm, I think that's from across the street. Uh, let's see, where is the back? Yeah, that's across the street. Oh, he didn't take one of front on. Okay, so what this would mean is effectively we would come in here and probably, let's see, We'd probably make a pruning cut there. We'd make a pruning cut there. This one is kind of coming up a little bit, so maybe I would leave that alone. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. This is looking across, so once again, um, we would come in here and we would make a pruning cut here and here. Um, and then also, on top of that, guys, I just want to make a, a point to say, like, on these oaks, they get very hairy. So, like, a lot of this stuff needs to be thinned out. I don't, I can't, ugh, this is frustrating because I can't zoom in um, the way I want to zoom in. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. Come on, Russell. Get with the program. Here we go. Sorry. I can't zoom in. I'm playing videos for you guys. It's not intended to be on this podcast. Okay, hold on just a second. So let's see. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. 
You know, like, just look at how hairy that is in there. Ultimately, you know, like, when we go up and we prune out, and you can do it, you can get a pole saw, and you basically, you just go in and you just kind of work the inside of this tree. You go in and you take out a lot of, like, maybe you would take out a couple of these here and there, um, but you would go in and take a lot of these little guys out on the inside. Maybe on this little thing right in here, you'd take a little bitty cut right there. Um, you know, like you look at this little branch right there. Maybe you take that if that's growing out of there. Um, you know, like you just go through and make a, a bunch of small cuts to kind of loosen it up or open it up on the inside. Let's go to the next image and see if we can um, see something else here oops hold on russell come on get with your techie program aren't you supposed to be a tech guy russ russell i do like technology okay so so ultimately we're going to do a canopy lift in fact let's go back over there i think if i was going to do this tree if the client said hey we're going to be here for a while let's just get this thing done we would say, okay, let's let's do an interior prune. Let's take off all the way to here, okay? That way we're going to get rid of all of this material down here, okay? All of that material. And, um, and, then, and then I would probably just do an interior thinning of what's remaining by maybe 10%. So you got to remember that's not going to be all that much material, maybe 10, 15%. That might be a little bit much. Um, but basically that's just going through and, you know, one out of 10 twigs, you know, and I would focus on some about the size of your pinky to just go in and, um, and just prune out with a pole saw. That's it. Or a set of loppers. Um, you know, there's, there's an awful lot of, these uh, little things that, you know, you could get pruned out of there. Um, you know, I definitely you're not going to go through and take out a big leader like that. Maybe you take out something like this, but really what you want to focus on is stuff that's crossing and interfering. These oak trees get super, super crossing all over the place and they start rubbing. So you want to take out anything that's crossing and rubbing, crossing and interfering. You want to take out... Um, anything obviously that's dead or dying. Um, and then in this case, the client is complaining and saying, hey, downward pointing. So you wanna take out downward pointing. Let me just real quick, um, and maybe this is getting a little off subject, but I'm gonna show you C-O-R-O-N-A hand saw. So check this out. This is this little, cor no, not that one, this one. The 17, 20, 13 inch, that's not the one I use. I use the 14 inch. Um, that, just as a side note, um, that's, this is the one that we use. I really like this saw. It's cheap, 24 bucks, cuts on the pull, super sharp. I've got like 10 of them sitting in, uh, on, on inventory um, because they're just, they're really, really good saws. They make a clean cut. So that's what I would recommend as far as that goes. Um, that's it, guys. This is just a very rough, um, but, you know, and then let's just go real quick. Um, I know I've talked about this before. Uh, pruning. Uh, whoops. Pruning thinning. Okay, so, you know, like, uh, let's just look at some of these images. So the ultimate goal with your pruning cuts is oh come on give me a size that i like um is to retain the, if you look at this before and after is to retain the overall shape okay but what you're what you're doing is you're taking out like that's a crossing and interfering branch notice that thing's not there anymore right it's gone what the heck is that little twig right there I would have taken that out, just joking. Uh, anyway, um, you're taking away crossing and interfering. You're taking away downward pointing. Um, let's look at this example. Um, definitely bad example. That is, golly, cherry trees in Atlanta. That's what happens to them all because clients can reach them. So they're like, oh, I'm going to prune a tree and they end up destroying them. That's, well, actually, in fact, this may be showing... Um, 
that what happens after you top trees. Let's just keep on looking at a few examples. Um, yeah, so like that's a good example of, you know, like um, taking out these upward pointings that are like, and this is starting to get into lion's tailing. It really depends on, um, you know, how much I kind of like lion's tailing, even though there's some debate on how awesome it is. But look at this. This is a great, like, lion's tailing cut. Let's just look at it real quick because I brought the subject up. Lion's tail pruning is this, okay? I like the look of it. I think it looks cool. There's some debate because these suckers kind of need to be there on the scaffold branch to add girth. I don't, I try not to go so extreme on lion's tailing. Um, you need to leave some because effectively um, it's, uh, you, you need to be able to uh, add girth. You know, you might leave a few in there. But anyway, all of that said, guys, this is the general rule. Um, let me just show you one other thing, and that would be the uh, S-I-L-K-K-Y-H-Y-U-C-H-I Silky Hayuchi. Oh, my goodness. Watch out. Now you've got a professional telling you what will really trim a tree. So that's what we have. They're a little expensive. Um, let's see, 244. Is that for the, um, is this for the 21 foot? I think it is. It better be. Um, this thing will reach up and touch someone. They are awesome. By far, this little tool right there can reach, like you could all day long and a bag of chips prune interior thin this entire thing sometimes on super small twigs it's kind of hard to use that saw whereas you would almost want like a set of loppers and the reason is is because the teeth kind of will if it's too thin the teeth can't grab they'll just the teeth will go around the twig and rip the twig which is not super awesome um so in those cases you want a set of like bypass loppers to uh snip the twig but then again it's kind of hard to get a perfect angle. I mean, when you're talking about super, super small cuts, though, it's probably not as big of a deal because there's not a ton for the tree to heal. Okay, that is it, guys. I think that kind of gives us a ballpark on this. Um, you know, once again, we'll look at this. Uh, oops, Russell, come on. Get your tech going. Okay, look at this. Once again, coming in here hitting this little area right in there. Um, you know, that's, I think I would do that. I would call that a done deal as far as where to prune because at the end of the day, I think that, um, you know, over the long haul with that tree, because you got to remember this tree right here is going to get as big as that tree. And as a side note, this stinks to say, but this poor tree is doomed because all these nice, super nice little sprigs going up, look where they're heading. They're heading straight toward that power line. And like, if you look at this poplar and this maple, look at how that maple has been just totally shot, man. The power company comes in and prunes it all. And the, the way that they prune is horrible. If I could turn this camera around, I'd show you out my window when the power company came out and pruned mine. I was so irritated. They ended up burying my cable over that whole issue because it was the weirdest thing. I have arborists on the side of my truck on my driveway, and they went in and made these horrible cuts. I'm not going to name the name of the company who did it either, but when they got done, I uh, assessed the value of my tree, and I said, hey, you guys are going to bury my cable or replace my trees, and they opted to bury the cable. Um, okay, uh, that is a total side note. Look. I just took you down the road and look at that. Look at that. Horrible. So that's what's that's what's coming for this little tree in the long run. Unfortunately, it's probably in reality like this little guy right here is a much better suited planted tree. That's never going to get too big. This little cherry probably won't. Um well, these on the other side. Oh, it's great myrtles. Cray myrtles get awesome. If you ever go to the Atlanta Botanical Garden, they get really big. A lot of people um, head them off 
but they get really big and beautiful. There's a couple outside the Atlanta Botanical Garden. Um, I mean, I'm telling you, they are like, the trunks are like that thick. They're like 60 foot tall. Um, I wonder if we can see those. A-T-L-A-N-T-A. B-B-O-T. G-E-R-E. Let's see if they have pictures of them. Atlanta Botanical Garden crepe myrtle. Here we go. Let's see. Images. Let's see if they're anywhere to be seen. I think those, yeah, those are it. Look at how big those things are. Oh, they're not 60 feet. But I wonder what year that was taken because they looked a lot bigger than that. But that's it right at the jungle, uh, right at the, uh, the entrance to the jungle garden. Um, or not garden, but... Uh, greenhouse okay guys that's it i kind of strayed around silky hayuchi corona uh handsaw this is the goal for thinning don't shape the outside prune the inside on pruning your uh on pruning interior thinning and at the end of the day um for my client that's the level i would go in there i would follow these examples of interior thinning shouldn't be that hard um, whatever you do, do not climb on a ladder. Well, unless you're tied in, I want to tell you what to do. Uh, as far as that goes, obviously you have a power line in there. Be careful with that. Uh, especially with, um, that, that silky Hayuchi is non-insulated. This is a 220, so it does have insulation on it, but you don't want to be cutting it. That'll kill you. So anyway, guys, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to call me, 770-ARBORIST. Um, we work in the North Atlanta area, Roswell, Marietta, uh, Alpharetta, uh, Cumming. Let's see, where else? Canton, Georgia, Holly Springs, Kennesaw, uh, at, or ISA certified, tree risk assessment qualified. There's your video for today. I hope you guys are having a happy holidays. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, share it with your friends who may have some pruning needs. And, uh, you know, ask some questions uh, in the comments. You guys take it easy. Bye-bye.